Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Art Class 4. Here we are again, um, just giving people a quick chance to get on board before I make myself live. Just check. Can somebody reply that they can hear me okay? Because I'm looking after all the technology tonight. So send me a quick message to say you can hear me loud and clear. That would be perfect. So I'll wait until I hear a message that says you can hear me. I could be waiting all night if nobody can. That's it. Evening. Evening, Paul. Evening, Izzy. Let's have a look who else. Yay, it's seven. Woo! I don't even know how you pronounce that. Sersh, Sershi, Sersh. You can correct me. So everybody can hear me. We can hear you loud and clear. Perfect. That's all I need to know. So here we go. Here we go. It's <laughs> right. Good evening, everybody. It's uh, art class four of uh, six. So everybody who's been with us, thank you very much. I'm in charge of the technology tonight because my trusted sidekick, Pete, has abandoned me. So as I can hear you all saying a collective R from the back, I will be in charge of putting these little messages on screen. I'll be in charge of changing the cameras. I'm in charge of drawing. I'm in charge of trying to keep my sanity. I've got a cup of tea tonight because I thought I'd probably best be safe. Um, right, I'll put a few, I'll just say hello to a few people. Let's have a look. Who's this? Hello, Chloe. You can hear me. Hello, Debbie. You can hear me. Poet Katie. Wait a minute. Here we go. Sersha. That's how you, that's how you pronounce can, can it. <laughs> Sersha. Hello, Sersha. Lovely to have you with us. Um, so again, we've got people on tonight from um, Texas, which is pretty cool. Um, we've also got people, oh, Prevent Breast Cancer are here. Nice to see you. Brilliant to have Nikki and all the team on board. Um, that's who we're doing these classes in support of, Prevent Breast Cancer. Um, and what they do, they are a charity based in Manchester. And what they deal with mainly is the prediction, the prevention and the protection from prevent um, from pre from breast cancer apologies um so what they do is um what i've got stats here that says of all the millions that are raised for cancer across the country only four percent are raised looking at prevention most of the other is not just about prevention so that's what prevent do that's very different to everybody else um let me just see who that is i'm drawing with my mummy I, i'm nine we can hear you hello Haley. hello so, yeah, you can add comments still. I will add you to the stream as I can and as I can see. I've got a couple of things. I've even got a couple of things that I didn't, I wasn't sure whether we're all going to draw or not. So I'm still in two minds what we're going to draw. So what I'm going to do for the first time ever, I'm going to let you decide what we're going to draw for the second half of the class. Are you ready? So I'm going to put on screen two different pictures. I hope I am anyway. I'll try it. Here we go. So... I've got this really nice eye for this lovely gentleman. Really nice old eye. Very interesting to draw. Or something totally different. A little fox. So if you can comment in the first half hour of the class, the one that gets the most comments, we will draw. If nobody comments, we'll do the eye because I like doing eyes. So that is my theory. So I'll just show you that a little bit closer. Some really lovely stuff on that. And again, there you go, Mr. Fox. So, yeah, if you can comment, we'll see where we'll go with that. But we're going to start with something very different. So let me get me back on screen. Let me see how I do this. You're going to have to bear with me. This could be quite good fun tonight. Um, yes, let's see. We've had lots of people subscribe, which has been amazing. We've got some new subscribers um, like I said last week, we've got people in Australia, Texas, Texas every week. I'm not there from Monday yet. Uh, I'd like to go for the heart, the eye. Oh, fox. Oh, no. I'm going to have to try and add these up. Um, two foxes and I. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Um, so, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, prevent breast cancer. Predict. Prevent. Protect. Have a look them up. Look them on the phone line. And everybody who's here tonight. You've all made a bit of a difference to that charity, 
to my heart and to my love and let's see what we can do to donate at the end of our six lessons. Um, I like to show you some artwork at the start. So I'll start with something that got me working with Prevent Breast Cancer was I did this B. Uh, yes, so this was booby. And it's booby because it's, uh, it's got boobies for eyes. So that is the booby. I had to go and source a crown. I painted it in their colours. It's got some of the key uh, messages from Prevent Breast Cancer around the bottom of it. And that sits in the Nightingale Centre in Withenshaw. And I get so many messages about people who are going for cancer treatment, who are just going to the centre for tests, etc. how it lifts their spirit when they go in. And it's little things like that that really make a difference to me as an artist who gets involved in every project emotionally, etc. cetera. Um, and finally, last week, we were talking about Womanchester. So this... It's not quite, but it's nearly sold out. So thank you once again for all the support. I'll bring it closer to the camera. <laughs> I'll try and see. Can't see what you can see. Um, yes, yeah, so there you go. Okay. So if you want to get that, there is still discount available on my website below the below the video tonight. Go and have a nosy. Lots of people have ordered, so thank you very much. And again, I'll be donating a little percentage of that to prevent breast cancer and let's see what we can get to. Right, I'll show up. I'll shut up. Sorry. I do go on with myself. Right. Let me see if I can wear these cameras out. Let's see if we can see what I can see. One of them. One of them. And one of them. Right. First thing. I've had loads of requests for this. So we are going to draw it tonight. And it's going to be a simple warm up. A simple rose. I've had loads of requests for it. So that's what we're going to do. Let me just have a quick look down. Fox, fox, I, fox, 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 I, I. Fox. <laughs> God. I think Fox is winning slightly at the minute. So here we go. We're going to do this rose. You can do what you want. I've got all my pencils for anybody who's not been here before. All sorts of manner of pencils, HB, 5B, 7B, etc. I always start with a nice light one because most people have a HB within their kit. We're going to use a HB. Um, so where do we start? We're going to, you can draw this as we do every week. You just go ahead and draw that as you want. If you want to listen to me along the way, you can do that. But what I'm going to do is try and show you how I would go about it. So first of all, we're going to start with the stem. And again, as, as we, again with every week, it doesn't have to be accurate. It just has to be your representation of a rose. So I'm just going to sketch down here. We can illustrate it in later by adding a lot more detail. But just sketchy line, same sort of angle, yeah? Now, the thing about it is, I say every week, it shapes. So what I'll do initially is I'm going to ignore all this. I'm going to ignore, sorry, I've moved. I'm going to ignore these petals around here for starters. And what I'm going to concentrate on, I think, is this section. Because if we go over here, let me get a heavier pencil. I'm just going to show you very quickly. There, there, stem. Now the middle bit is something like this. So there's your shape. There's your shape you're trying to achieve. Yeah, and then you can add on all your extras, all your little your little bonus bits. Okay. So that's what we're gonna try and do. And we can start with let's go here. Just give it this little this little curve. Okay. And then we're going to go up, as we just said. I don't feel like I'm holding the pencil very well tonight. You have to bear with me as well. I've got really bad tennis elbow, which is absolutely killing me. So I am suffering for my craft and all you people tonight. So I've gone for that. And that is my representation of the stem and just this middle section. Um, anybody else we could say Barbie? Barbado 89, aye, Fox. I like this one, so I'm going to show this. That one reckons Fox, that's Hayley. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, Nicola, aye. Hello to Nicola, by the way, up in the northeast there. Um, I'm not sure if it's Newcastle, but I'm sure she's throwing things at the screen as we speak. Um, so, yeah, up in the northeast, we've got uh, Nicola and Bella. 
and Dad Allen, I believe. So hello to Dad Allen and all those in the northeast. I think the Mackums, actually. I'll be nice and say the Mackums. Uh, okay, so I'm going for this section here. And that is now this tuber, and then this little curve here. That's all I've done. And we will be drawing over this because obviously there are things in front and things behind. So I'm going to just represent that bit there. And I can see that bit. So the point is that when you draw, and I've been doing this quite a while, obviously we have to do it quicker tonight. So it's never as good as spending lots of time doing this rows, but you can do that after the class. This is more the representation of how you go about it. Hello, Amy in the Northeast. Amy Smith. Hi, Nicola. We're in the Northeast. Same but really bad carpal tunnel. So yeah, it's painful, isn't it? Trying to draw with a pretty sore arm. Um, okay. And now I'm just going to try and do this bit. Yeah, what we're saying is um, find the bit that you're most comfortable to start with. Don't go for, oh, my God, I can't draw this. Start with the easiest bit you can see. So I started with the stem because I knew I could get the direction of that. Then you start with this shape, which will be drawn over. And then just start adding in the elements that you know are related to that shape. So now from here, I can pretty much, let's have a look where we're going to go next. I think I'm going to put in this little, this little fella at the back here, which is just again, is there. It goes to this bit and comes in and goes out. So something like, and again, do what you like, whatever you feel. Somebody sent me a message today that was like, did the class with a husband and um, it's the first time they sort of spent a good hour with each other doing, um, doing the art class after last week. Um, and she sent a photo and everything and their results were fantastic. And it's just it's so good to just get feedback from people that says, you know, you're making such a difference when you sort of don't really appreciate it. Don't appreciate how many people follow it and how many people look forward to it. It's really humbling. Uh, right, I might have gone ahead of myself here, but I'm just going to see how I get on. So I'm going to split this in the middle. I'm going to go across here and then up, up there. And if I've gone ahead of myself, I'll probably made a mess of this. Okay. So things are starting to overlap now, but that is where your trusty rubber comes in. Never forget your rubber. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, right. So that bit there that I've just drawn is here. That simple thing. And a, it follows on. It goes this way. goes this way. And again, if you want reference, if you look there, that's where I've drawn to. Look what it lines up with so it lines up with the corner of that one so if i'm right it should line up with the corner of that one and look i am wrong and that is a, just simple simple things just to get things in the right place so if that's wrong then that's wrong but now you can put that in because you've got reference because that goes there and that goes there you see what i mean it's it's lining things up, it's getting the original shape in, and then it's just starting to build the drawing up. Now, I'm not happy with this bit. Like I say, this is the warm up, and then I'll decide. Whatever we don't do tonight, we'll do next week, I promise. So if we do the eye tonight, or the box, one or the other, we'll do the other one next week. We need somebody to make a case for the fox, or somebody to make a case for the eye. So. Get, get making your cases. Get Boris on. Get Boris on the go. Boris can do anything. Apparently. Okay. <clears throat> I probably will ramble a bit tonight because I'm trying to think about 10 things at once. Okay, so that's there. Right, next thing is we're going to try and get this big petal in here. So... We've got this curve here that goes to the center. So we'll call that that bit. And the tuber comes out. Uh, I'm calling it as tuber. I don't know if it is a tuber. 
Um, okay, so the reference point, I'm going to go up here because that I know that that is definitely right. And then there, and then there, and then we've got some of this sort of ruching. Okay. Um, right, and now I'm going to make a little bit of a rubbing out. We're going to give that a bit more curve. And a bit less there, a bit there. But you see how it's starting to build up bit by bit? It does start to make sense. And anything you've done wrong, you just go backwards. Just rewind it a little. So I'm going to put this petal in now because that can go up there, and there, and there. That can now follow wider. And then we've got this little nice little thing popping out the side. Now this side, we've got this and it's like a petal thing. And we'll end up, what we'll end up with at the end, we'll shade it slightly, but you're going to end up with something that's a bit more illustrative. Now, if you've got time after the class, maybe get some nice soft um, pencils. Um, and maybe colour it in if you want. If you feel like it. Okay, right. And that is almost, I think that's the structure of the rose. I think. Not a mile away. It's not perfect. But I think in 10 minutes it's not bad. The only bit that I don't like is there. So I'm going to get rid of it. <clears throat> okay. And I'm going to have to have a little bit of my brew in a minute. Can't drink a cold brew. A little bit of bread. Hi. That's me just messing with the cameras. Just see, just because I can. Fox, because my brother is ginger. What a great shout that is. Look, and that's Izzy, Izzy Jude. What's this here? Hi, Amy from the northeast. Jordy's is in the house tonight. Oh, God. Started something now, aren't we? So, sorry, we're back. We're back. Okay. So, what we're going to do now is we use some of these pencils that we've got. Some of the different grades of pencils. If you're lucky enough to have got any pencils, I've recommended a few sets to people. Message me. I'll put you onto the ones that I bought. They're absolutely fine. They're about ten quid. Nothing exciting. Nothing expensive. But they're perfect for this. So. Is that just check the focus on that. Right, here we go. I'm going to start shading a little bit now. So this is where things will start to start to pop out a little bit on the page. I'm going to go for all these dark sections. Again, you go ahead and shade how you want. I showed you a few different shading techniques over the last couple of weeks. We've got just heavy and lifting off and then just going lighter and lighter and lighter. We've got really really small light circles and if you want to go heavier you go heavier and if you want to go lighter lighter and we've got cross hatching some people like to do that i don't particularly like to do cross hatching um it's up to you so just for the purpose of this i'm just going to do what looks right and you go always go in the direction of the object that you're drawing so don't be tempted to like do that leaf so if there's a leaf like that don't shade it like that if there's a leaf like that shade it in a sensitive way that makes it actually look like a shape you know because that is how you'll start to build up things that start to look like things um right and then obviously with one good rule with shading is this dark and light area so the darker it is next to a light wall next to it you will get a much better a much better standout so again after the class tonight i say it every week i try not to bore myself and bore everybody else uh share your artwork on social that would be really cool tell everybody about the class if you've enjoyed it if you've not enjoyed it don't tell them just say this guy was going on with himself. Um, yeah, tell everybody about the class. Let's try and get as many people there. We've got two weeks to go. What I'm going to do on the last week, I am going to give something away, I think. 
so I'm going to give a piece of artwork away on the last week. Um, just one of my pieces um, to the person who's maybe been here a few times. Maybe they've only been here once, but it's the ones who are taking part, getting involved, maybe spreading the word. Just anybody who sort of gives their support to it and to me, obviously, it does help. I've had lots of support myself. I've had a couple of bad weeks mentally and physically and just generally so just to get nice messages of people who care is very nice it does help me and this is what i use as my therapy it's helping all you people so my therapy is is helping people and just trying to be nice so you see how this is starting to come together now Another thing I've been asked about as well um, a couple of times is about perspective. I'm going to show you in a, between this and whether we do the fox or the eye um, about perspective. <clears throat> All right, we've got the petal here. So I'm going to use the sharp part of the pencil. I'm just making this bit up over here because I don't know what it is. I think it's, I'm going to pretend it goes there. A bit of artistic license coming in. How's everybody getting on? Island, yes. Any more comments, anybody? Okay. So hopefully everybody's getting on. Yeah, but say, when you've finished, share on social media, put it on Instagram, follow me on Instagram, um, and I will share, everybody who's post, me to, post to me tonight, I will share all your pictures on social. Um, and also tag me into your stories. It's quite cool to, to basically take over. <laughs> it's good to take over a platform for an evening. Okay. Okay. I'm just adding a little bit of je ne sais quoi. I shouldn't be able to say that, should I? So, yeah. But you see that's starting to form now. Now I'm going to use a very light pencil. So I'm going to, I've got a H. And what I'm going to do with the H is you can see all these sort of spiny things. So I'm just going to just sort of represent these in here quite quite lightly. I'll probably have to press on a bit more so you can see better. I'll just see if I can do that. But also remember as well, which is another good thing, is <clears throat> I showed everybody the blender that I've got. And I've, I've heard again of somebody who said they, they bought a pencil set that got a blender with it. Not a food blender. An actual uh, lead blender. Um, and that is, that's one of these. It's just a very, very hard paper, like a lolly stick. And I'll show you what that does in a minute if you've not seen before. I'll try and go around this camera. I should say hello to my mum. I bought my mum a, um, a set of pencils for Mother's Day. She also got alcohol, I think. I can't think. What, oh, flowers. I can't remember what I got her. Got her all sorts of stuff. Um, but yeah, I got her a set of pencils because my mum, 81 years old, is doing these classes every week, doing her best, giving it a go, and I will post her results later. I don't think she knows how to comment, though. She barely knows how to use Zoom, to be honest. She just saw... <laughs> When, you, when you're in growth on FaceTime, the only thing you can see when you get through to her on FaceTime is the inside of her ear, which is quite funny. Uh, so, hello to Nana Joan. Hi, Mum, who's with us tonight. Okay, you see? It's starting to look like a flower. Now I'm going to use the little blender. I'm going to use this little blending stick, and like I say, all it does is smooth things out. So what's the difference this will make to the stem without actually adding any anything to it whatsoever? I can soften all these areas. I'm after your final shouts now for Fox or I. Final shouts. Last train from you, Stern. And this is basically how to draw a rose. Very simple, something that looks a bit complicated when you start, 
but you just break it down, take it slowly, learn what goes in each position, and just you will eventually get something that looks like this pretty flower. So yeah, nothing majorly complicated, but I was asked a few times. Um, hello to Vanessa. I've got to say hello to Vanessa. Um, right, we're going to have to have a bit of nosy now. So this is this is the first thing we've drawn tonight. This is a rose. There's me. Um, and this has started out with this. We've got a shape. We've built up that shape. We've added to it with things that we can reference. So where things stick out, where things move. And with those reference points, we've managed to create something that doesn't look too bad, really. You know, and if you did that bigger, you could always paint it. You could watercolor it. Please, Fox, please, Leah. Yeah. I think we're going to have to go with Fox. I think we're going to have to go with Fox because I think Haley wants to do Fox. So let's have a look. Let me. Uh... So we're all happy with this. We're going to move on to something else very quick. Let me see where I am. Yay. Um, yes. So that was a simple rose. Uh... Is that in focus? I don't know if that's in focus. Fox, fox, fox. It's all happening now. I think I'm going to start a fight. Um, I'm just going to show you one thing very quickly, and you can all have a quick go at it. Um, just cause I want to, and hopefully we'll still have enough time for the fox. That could cause trouble. Uh, right, let me get... Where's my camera? Where's my camera? I know where's the buddy. It's going to Wow. Be like a TV producer tonight, it's very exciting. We're going to just do a very quick lesson in perspective, very, very quick, like literally two minutes. And I know that's not going to cover everything, but just very quickly, this is how I learn perspective and it's quite a good way because I hate drawing buildings. Um, so there's a thing called vanishing point. What vanishing point is, is for instance, a point on a paper that everything is built from. Everything comes from it. So that's your vanishing point. So as if that's the horizon, just imagine that's your sun. Yeah? So there's your sunset. So the vanishing point is where everything vanishes into the distance. So, for instance, here we go. Dead quick. So it was one of the things that I learned very young. Yeah? I'm going to do a very, very quick set of buildings, like a shopping centre, in two minutes. Okay, so we've got this on the page. It's two squares. Your vanishing point is going to be here. There's your vanishing point. Your vanishing point over here probably needs to be about the same distance, but on the other side. Okay. And then we'll have top of the building. All you've got to do, don't have to be accurate. All you've got to do from there is go one, two, three four if you had more time you could do this you could spend all day doing this uh if you want you can put another sneaky one in there all right that's one side all you've got to do on this side is replicate what you got there so we go from there there Ooh, uh, can you see past my hand i think you can uh so from there this is not very easy around a camera i apologize but this will give you a very quick idea, perspective, to the vanishing point. I'm just doing my best to do this sort of. Yeah. So there, already, just making those marks on a paper makes it look like something's coming towards you. So now, for instance, watch this. Let's do a straight line. There. And a straight line. Mm, let's go there. OK, it now could be that this these buildings are closer than these buildings. So let's do another line that's a bit closer. So this distance, then this is shorter. And then we go a bit shorter, a little bit shorter, a little bit shorter, very narrow, very narrow, blah, blah. And there, see what I mean? That's how you do perspective if you're doing buildings and such like. You can do the same on the other side. I'm just going to make this up because I'm speeding along. You see what I mean? 
And then if he was an architect or anybody who wanted to draw buildings or get good at drawing buildings, you could then add detail. So everything would then run, all them would run parallel. And you start getting results that you're like, I couldn't draw that. But look how quick it's straight lines. It's really easy. It's not straight lines in my case because I'm a, kind of a bit wobbly here. But, um, but for instance, if you was like really sort of designing shops, you know, there's your, there's your shop doors. There's your shop doors on your shopping center. And then you can start adding in darkness to this side of the lines. Okay, shadow is always is always going to be on the on the same side. So, because the light source will be there, shadow is always going to be on this side. Ba 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 ba. Okay, but you see what see what's starting to happen is you're starting to get representation of the buildings, and as long as everything is on the same same vanishing point and the same trajectory, you should be able to build up a really ornate picture. And then if you want to break it up, you can see how I entertain myself, can't you? You know, turn it into, and it really then starts to make your scene look different. So, for instance, this is a shopping centre at Christmas. <laughs> yeah? If you were doing it as an illustration, we could have some clouds, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Do you see what I mean, though? That's that's a good way of doing a, a vanishing point and is a very good test. If you use rulers, you can obviously get it really perfect and really good. Um, if you use your pens and pencils, but you could always shade all the windows in very quickly and just make it, you know, some sort of some sort of scene. Go and take some pictures outside, take a picture of the building or a, building of your, a picture of your house and then just start to experiment. So there you go, that's two minutes of vanishing point. I've not done that for a long time. Right, here we go, here we go everybody. You get that on there. See, this is it, this is where, I've not drawn this. I've never had a go at this, so I'm gonna draw this. And here he is. Da -da. Okay, we are drawing for all these amazing people we are going to draw the fox so it's going to be on screen at all times i'm going to draw it how i would draw it and how i see it obviously that could be different to how you see it and how you draw it but you just enjoy drawing it i'm just going to have a little bit of juice you can go ahead and start i just have a last um a shout out um prevent breast cancer so a unique unlike other charities their focus is prevention not cure and stopping the problem before it starts so going genetically through the family's structures and you know your chances of developing it in the future and getting it very very early before any signs whatsoever so that's what prevent breast cancer do they are incredible and Let's have a look. Breast cancer is the most common cancer for women in the UK. 55,000 people are annually are diagnosed. So let's do something about it. And obviously it affects men as well. So for me and for everybody out there, and my family's been affected by it. So um, I will do what we can to support these amazing charities. Right, here we go. We've got half an hour to try and draw Mr. Fox. Hopefully you can see that quite well. I'll try and get a bit more over here yeah so it's again it's about creating these the bits that you can see that are the easiest parts for you to draw now a lot of my drawings if i'm doing a portrait i would start drawing with an eye in this case i think i'm going to just start with the shape and go from the nose because it is a silhouette as what we're drawing here so i'm going to start with the nose and as again each week we build this drawing up, you will realise if it's right or wrong and what needs changing. So I'm going to go for that angle there. That's going to be my very first mark on the page. And I've got a... Um, let's go with a HP if I can find it. Can't find it. 
HB, HB. How's our friends in the northeast getting on? I'm not here from Monday tonight. In te oh, Jeff's there. Hi, Jeff. Jeff says Fox. Thank God. So the, this Fox is winging its way to Texas. Always good to have Jeff and Monday on. Uh, right. So I'm going to start with that line there. Very, very simple line, which is going to follow that. And you have to appreciate my camera's at a slight angle, so this might look slightly slightly off, but I, I'll show you close up later. And I'm just going to give a bit of an impression of the nose based on where it is there. And then I'm going to come down, just get the bits in that I'm happy to draw straight away. Don't look at the whole thing and go, I can never draw that. Because everything will come to you. All right, I'm going to go down, down and under his mouth. And then inside, he's got this little smile. And this is the way I'm going to do it now. So if I go from, so what I want to try and do is get that. So that's sort of, sort of in line with there. So if my drawing is right, it's somewhere there. And then his jawline goes like that, goes quite close. And then it goes there, and then it sort of peaks, peaks back in again. And that is my starting point, because I can then use that as a point of reference for everything else. Whether it's right or it's wrong, we will only find out as we go along. So you've got to be confident to make the first marks on the page and then take it from there. This is obviously very long, so it's not that long. All I've done is drawn a line in that sort of trajectory. Uh, right, so from the corner of the eye, if we go parallel with there, let's just do another parallel sort of line on there, just to give us another point of reference, as if, so that probably comes to the corner of his nose, I'm not a mile away, but this is just the penciling in stage, so, and now, this is another bit that I think looks like a piece that we can get in. Does that look about right? Okay. And we build it up and we build it up and we hope that we've done it. We hope we've got it right. <clears throat> so next thing, I think we're going to have to make a critical decision. Right, we've got this bit here. Let's get that bit in because that goes from the bottom of his mouth. So... We know that's not a mile away. Okay. The critical part here is how big his head is and where his eye is. The eye will, this eye will define whether it's right or wrong. So we know his eye, if we do a straight line down, sorry, Mr. Fox, goes to the middle of his mouth. So that takes you to his eye. Okay. And then we've got to really trust ourselves and hope that what we've sketched is right. And if it's not, we just rub it out and we try again. Don't make a big deal of it. If you enjoy drawing, half the battle is having the confidence to start. Right, I'm happy with that for now. And I'm gonna do with just the roundness of his eye just to give me a bit more of a reference. And I'm just going to stick that bit of darkness in there so we've got a bit of an eye. And he's got this really nice long bit there. We've got this bit here, which is dark. And I'm just going to fuzzy it in here a bit and just go up here. And it goes very dark there. But the, just these little marks do make a difference because it does, when you... One of the things that I always say when you're drawing is squint a lot. So take a little step back, have a little squint. Does it look right? Put the picture next to it you're trying to get ne near, near to. So already now, I'm happy with the eye. Happy with whether I think the mouth is, because we know it's in line with the eye. Sort of happy with that bit. That sort of continues there. Goes across there. Now his nose which was our first line, goes closer, I think. Yeah. And now getting his other eye in should be easy because we can just do a straight line from the corner there, corner there. And then his other eye 
obviously is in that is in that section. And we'll just do it there. So we'll give that impression of where his eye is. Now I've got that line to get. So I'm gonna do it like a straight line. See lots of foxes where I live. It's uh they're all over the all over the place. Nighttime, whatever they call them, them foxes that come out, neighborhood foxes. Um and again, just start to feather in things that you can confident that they're in sort of the right position. Okay. One thing that I find amazing, and I'm, I guess because I do it all the time, but how quick the class goes, how quick the hour goes. And I think that says a lot, not about me teaching, but how enjoyable drawing can be while you're thinking about something totally different to your day to day, whether it be school, whether it be work, whether it be meetings, that sort of thing. It does give you a bit of an escape. And I think if you can get nothing else, you can escape with drawing. Okay, right. So that's, that's not a bad start. They've got quite a long, thin face but they've got this really expansive head. But again, now they, we could measure from the top of the eye to that point there. Where's that? So let's do that, let's go there. So if I follow a straight line down, see, it goes to the corner of his eye. So if I take the corner of his eye there, keep going, keep going. Yeah? And now I can just work out what sort of, what sort of uh, angle that is. It's quite steep. Yeah. And that takes you to his ear. Now, you know, his ear goes from that point and goes outwards. So I'm just going to sketch a little line in there. This corner of his ear there is. Is somewhere, probably somewhere in this region. So I'm going to just, again, have the confidence to just make a mark and go and meet that other line. And like I say, this is the sketching phase. So this is where you're trying to make it look like a fox without doing any shading. And if it looks like a fox without any shading, you've cracked it. Right, his other ear. So we know it's there. We know it's quite curved. We know it's not as high as that one, but it comes over and goes across and Let's again put another reference in. So it goes below. So if that's that bottom of the ear. So that's the bottom of the ear. We know it comes in somewhere there. And there's our reference. Very, very simple gauged shading. And it goes up and it's a bit wiggly there. Okay. So next week we will do the eye, but we might, we might do a surprise one. I was going to say before actually, <clears throat> whilst I'm going on with myself, not there, not there to do, um, is, let me just get these lines in while I'm thinking about it, otherwise I'm going to end up all over the show. You see it's starting to take shape. And this is, I'm going at the same pace as you. I've never drawn this fox before, but this is how I would go about it. And hopefully this is helpful showing you how you use reference points. I'm just gonna go out there and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go there as if I know what I'm talking about. And there, so that gives me an idea where I'm shading and I don't think that's, I don't think that's bad. I don't think that's bad. Might not be perfect, but if I cover that up, it looks like a fox to me. Don't worry, don't worry. It doesn't have to look like the identical drawing. You are creating your own drawing of a fox. It's nothing to do with absolute replication of somebody else's picture. It's about giving your own impression of what this looks like and nobody will ever see the original just 
just show them this and go, wow, check me out. Okay, and that is the fox. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you some shading. I've missed my first class. I've been looking out for an email. I thought it must be next week. I'll watch. Don't worry. We'll sort it out. Meany 999. It's good to have you here. Um, so, yeah, what I was going to say, my last, so there's two more classes after this. That'll be five and six. And then on the sixth class at the end, I will give out a piece of artwork. Just anybody who supported me, who's enjoyed the classes, give good comments, posted pictures, anything like that. I'll give a piece of artwork away, I'll post it, and my my I'll charge myself um, so you get it free of charge, and it'll be my gift to you. Um, and what we might do as well, we might get Prevent Breast Cancer to show some of the artwork across some of the weeks. So keep your pictures, or keep pictures of your pictures, and let's maybe get um, a little social media thing on the six week. And lastly, after the six weeks lesson, Either on the same night, um, straight after the class, we might do a Zoom with anybody who wants to come on, show your face and chat to me about art, chat to me about the best cup of tea, chat to me about North versus South, whatever. A uh, chance to ask me questions, chance to see people face to face and just a chance to sort of round off six weeks um with something nice i think that would be, well, might be quite good so remind me because i probably will forget but that was my idea um right so what we're going to do is now we're going to start putting the detail in and this is where again things will start to come to life i've got here uh what is it so 5b 5b Oh, hi, Anne. <laughs> no idea how that name came about. Um, hi, Anne. Anne's been doing some great little pictures, uh, and she keeps sending me nice pictures. So I'm going to start now with the, the most important impact part of the picture, which I love drawing, is eyes. And if you get a nice detailed eye, okay, you can just start to start to get i can't see what sort of eyeball these foxes have i'm, I'm going to give it a human-esque human-esque eyeball i've no idea what sort of eyeball they have but i'm going to give it a bit of a weighty eye it looks quite fierce doesn't it Quite grumpy, I think, foxes. But again, putting in the areas that you can see, that you're confident you can shade, and everything else should fall into place. It's very, very dark in here. So, yeah, if you've got any ideas what you want to draw next week, other than the, the old guy's eye, let me know. If there's anything you need to ask me, just get in touch. I always reply to everybody. Um, as best I can, and I'll try and give you some information. I'll send you where to get pencils, give you art advice. I can barely feel my right arm at the minute. <laughs> Ouch. This is a sign of getting old, I think. Okay, uh, I'm going to put his nose in as well, just because it's nice and dark. And again, I can't really see much of his nose because of the shape of it, but I'm just going to shade it in. I'm going to leave a bit of light on it. I'm just going to leave a bit of light on it like that. Again, another nice bit here is his mouth, which sort of goes up and then goes a bit fiercer there. And then maybe a bit of feathering on there, because he's obviously a furry little fella. And I'm going to have a bit more in there. And now a very dark bit under here, obviously. You can see that. 
I'm just going to, obviously I have to do this a little quicker than I would normally. So this is not how I would shade it normally, but we'll get the idea. But again, look, I'm going with the direction of the fur. You don't want to annoy the fox by doing his fur the wrong way. But look, it's very dark. So just lift in. Dark, leave a few areas that you don't necessarily colour. I'm going to go across here. Again, keeping it sort of in the trajectory of where we think it is. Okay. So that's giving that sort of impression. I'm going to just add in a bit more weight into this bit. Yep. And there's a bit more darkness in here. It's funny how these sort of got the same, they sort of have human human style <laughs> like a frown and stuff all uh, right we've got these sort of darker bits here so yeah if everybody can share after the class that would be lovely on facebook or instagram um i'm just gonna make this up now so it's sort of lifting and scattering pencil lines some with a bit more weight and then all sort of disappearing into this sort of section. Oh, I'm losing me. I'm losing the ability to use my arm. <laughs> oh. uh, okay. Let's see. It's where you can see his other eye, or you can see the darkness of his other eye. And he's got all this sort of stuff here. This is all just with one pencil at the minute because I want to get some of these the dark bits in and then we can use other pencils. If I had a lot more time, I could spend two or three hours doing this. Um, so you have to appreciate. Well, hopefully it'll give you an idea. And we're going to put some of these dark things in there. It's got a very dark tip to his ear. Trying to be quicker, trying to speed it up a bit. Okay, now the back of this area is really dark. And I can quickly fill that in. And towards the bottom, it gets lighter. Towards the bottom, it gets even lighter. So I'm doing the lifting off, like I was showing you before, shading wise. That gives you a bit more 3D. This bit here. So the inside of the ear. Curves in there. Got some darker bits. Got these weird things going on here. Almost a little bit of edge to that. Uh, so I'm hoping everybody's getting something foxy. Yeah. Not too bad. And now I'm going to choose. Am I going to change? I'm going to just. This has just got lines of whiskery bits. All right, and now I'm just going to go to a very light pencil now. So I've got a, a 2H. And this should just give us a bit more scope to be able to sort of shade in along with the, the sort of direction of the animal so that's where his nose will go yeah and up here i've not got time to make it super accurate but if i did we would have a nice looking fox mm -mm -mm. Now, the, his hair on his ear seems to go in this direction. 
So I'm going to just give a little bit of an impression of that, maybe a couple of heavy ones. Okay, and then within his ear, there's all sorts of fur going on. And it all sort of wraps in here. So let's give that impression again. And it gives you the ability then with the different pencil gives you the ability to build up the shading, get the different elements in there, back of his head. So what I, what would be good is if people get more time after the class, they can attempt this again in your own time. What we are doing is we're just keeping on on the class at the minute, the, the previous class. And then when we get to the end, there will be a passcode for accessing what, what you need to access. So if you want to do the classes again, I think that's how we're doing it. Okay, he's starting to look like a fox. And then all this fur is all going this way. Obviously not with lots of, I'm not defining this in any way. Just giving you the idea of how easy it is to build up a drawing. And hopefully everybody's finding it therapeutic. Good choice, actually, doing a fox. I've never drawn a fox before. Um, so I'll use my little blender in a minute just to see if I can just rock it a little bit more. I just want to get, ooh, get pencil on as much of this as I can. Okay, and something heavier. Yeah. There we go, we're getting there, we're getting there. With a lot more time, you could make this perfect. You can make it look amazing, as I'm sure some of you will. My idea is show you where I would start, how I would build it up, what we use as reference points for the drawing, and then how we get to a finished result. And here we go. Make that a bit darker in his mouth. All right, make me blender. And I'm gonna just then start to blend this a bit more to get the fur looking a bit more foxy furry. You start to see a bit more then of how much just your blending of the pencils can make such a big difference. in a very quick way. So it should work nicely for this, for the fur. Okay, get to the top. Nearly lost the, <laughs> nearly lost the use of my right arm. And again, use a bit of artistic license, get, you know, start to start to feed bits that you've not, you know, you don't have to do it exactly the same. And you should have something that looks slightly like this. Does that look all right? Not bad actually in 20 minutes. 
Okay, so we're coming towards the end of the class. And once again, as always, thank you so much just for coming and listening to me and giving me such wonderful feedback, being so nice, supportive, and we're helping prevent breast cancer with these classes. Um, uh, here we go. So we'll lose that. And I think I don't think that's bad in that amount of time. Oh man, oh man. I can barely feel my arm, so <laughs> I apologize for going on and making a few uh pain noises but oh my god um that was it that's class four so thank you once again for coming um i hope you've enjoyed it feedback get on instagram get on facebook put it wherever you want but save it and let's get the community growing um and again next week we'll come up with a different subject we'll draw we'll draw this fella this fella um and we'll add a couple of extra little things along to it so thank you so much uh thank you to sue thank you to Mini, who i think is Anne. uh is this hi from manchester love this so much thank you chloe uh a cheeky wine can we draw some sort of what's that can we draw some sort of food sample example a burger can you color it uh, my Instagram is Justin underscore Eagleton, E-A-G-L-E-T-O-N. Find me, follow me, and post, and I will put it on my story. Right, I'm going to go because I need some painkillers and a cup of tea. <laughs> so thank you to everybody who's been here right across the country, from the north to the south, from Australia and to Texas, obviously. Um, so much love to everybody, and I will see you all again next week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.